Welcome again. We've got a very interesting topic today. Um, I'd like to thank Loma for taking time to be with us. Uh, Loma's been a patient for a very long time, but, and then, but the last how many years have you been living abroad now? Uh, yeah, going on five. Five years, yeah. okay. So I haven't seen her for quite a while, but uh, she's been away. Um, but anyway, sorry, we're gonna, I'm digressing. So this is my channel, and if you like our content, please subscribe and like and share, because one day I need to make this channel actually <laughs> pay me. <laughs> yes. So please, okay, I'm begging you. <laughs> All right, so um, Loma's now visiting from the UAE and she's got an interesting story to tell uh, about all the experiences she's had over there having to be admitted to hospital because of extreme pain. Okay, so thank you Loma. Yes, you're so welcome. Mm, so tell us. Okay, so um, I think that I've been in hospital for probably 15 or 16 times over the last three years. And every time um, I go, it's because I have this absolute sensation that I'm having a heart attack. Mm. Um, not that I had the phobias of what a heart attack would feel like, mm. but the pain presents itself on the left. Mm. And I have seen numerous specialists. And the latest specialist actually said to me, but wherever this pain presents, because it's, it's, always, it's always moving. Mm. Um, but he then said to me, it cannot be your heart because it's too low. Mm. So it's somewhere here. Mm. Mm. But when, when it actually starts, it's like a, a, you know, like a heart. It's like you know, 10 out of 10. Absolute agony. Mm. Um, I turned white, mm. um, cold, mm. hot, sweaty, mm -hmm. and I can't breathe. Mm. Um, the pain yeah. also go a little uh, bit into the neck or more sometimes just sometimes into mm. my arm, which mm. also then makes me think, oh my God, you know, mm. I'm having a heart attack. Mm. Um, but I've had, oh, in the in the course of the, yeah, the last three years, probably 20 ECGs. And the last one, um, what the, the doctor said, you know, you've been back so many times, so let's do the, um, the, the resting, you know, just ECG, and then also the, what do you call that, the, the physical on the treadmill thing, whatever, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, yeah, yeah stress, I think stress, the stress, stress ECG, ECG, yes, yeah, and nothing, mm. every time, but the mm. thing is, it, it, it actually became a thing, you know, mm. like a, complete mental mm. issue because mm. when I feel it I think I'm dying mm. and then um, there's nothing mm. so then also I've had um, all the x-rays and the test for gastric you know problems and That's every right. time nothing no yeah. cholesterol blood perfect mm. everything fine and kidney function uh, liver function 100% but yeah. um, but this but still oh my god yes yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. so yes. yeah and it's not anxiety okay no, because yeah. people so, will say, oh God, it's a female, it must be anxiety, you know? Yeah. Um, I, although I do um, think that because it's been going on for so long, yes. now it's almost started to, you know, no, sort of out. The, the anxiety mm. thing. Because, mm. you know, I think I'm dying, yet everyone mm. else is like, mm, there's nothing wrong with you, go home. Yes. So they always put me on a drug. Yeah. They do yeah. say, like, I'm always completely dehydrated, according to them, and then I go home. Mm. And sometimes I go home and I feel a lot better. Sometimes I go back three or four hours later because it's just back. Mm. So, so no pills were helping. It was no. just like... No, nothing. So yeah. it's pretty... Yeah, I'd also be afraid because it's like you, you are in pain. And then you see all these specialists, because every time she goes, you see a different doctor, right? Exactly. So, yes. and also all the different specialities from cardiologist yeah. to yeah. endocrinologist it, to it, gastroenterologist. I've, I've been to them all. <laughs> yes, I've been yeah. to them all. Yeah, okay. Oh, and then we forgot to say that now my headache started. Uh, so, yeah, then last year, June, I was hospitalized for six days because of a severe headache. I've never had headaches in my life. Mm. And there again, after uh, MRI, testing blood, and blah, 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 um, the doctor said, migraine. It's yeah. a migraine, but yeah. I have never had it. I'm also menopausal, mm. so with the lower um, levels or the zero levels of mm. estrogen, um, mm. uh, migraine is actually not a possibility. Okay. So again, yeah. headaches and, yeah. and severe headaches. So, okay, so that's how she presented, and I've been knowing about her, um, how she's been suffering with this stuff, and unfortunately, when I'm here, I can't say to her what it is. I mean, I kind of do know, but... 
I, I don't know how to tell somebody else what to do, okay? Mm. Because it's the way I work. So, right. What also has happened, which which um, I know, it's like 10, 12 years ago. Even longer. Even longer than... Four, yeah, 14 maybe. Yeah. yeah. So, Loma has had breast implants that long ago. Okay, so I just want to show you, um, if you don't know, how they do breast implants is that most of the time is they take the pec muscle off the rib cage so if you think this is now the muscle so the muscle has two that's what's called the bicep bi is in two so the one head attaches here onto the coracoid process which is part of the scapula okay and onto the humerus so Steve i would say stevie's still. yeah stevie's <laughs> our our model <laughs> So as you can see, this bone is attached to the scapula, right? And the second tendon goes up into the front of the uh, humerus, all right? So the muscle runs all the way along here, all the way down to there kind of thing, and all the way back up here. So it's this sort of shape. So when they do surgery is they go here and they make a, a, a cut and then they lift that and then they start to cauterize and remove the pick off the, the ribs. Now, I don't know if you know what cauterize is basically burning your muscle off the off the ribs. So it's you know that stinky thing that you smell like burning flesh, not pleasant. But anyway, I digress. So appreciate now, say for example, your pick was lying like that. Okay, so now they take your pick and it's it's flopped, flap, <laughs> flopped, flapped up right like over here now what they have to do is they have to put in that little incision where this implant and then try and then get the muscle down again okay so it doesn't take rocket science to figure out that the muscle is attached to this and this so now if your pec was here now all of a sudden it's sitting here these shoulders are going to go forward Okay, that's the first thing. That's why a lot of people end up with shoulder problems and pain between the shoulder blades. Another problem that can happen is you start to develop, it's not immediate, it takes a couple of years, five years plus. Um, two things can happen. You also can form a capsule around the implant because it's your body, antibodies are trying to attack it. So, um, because it's a foreign object. So as you know, if you've got a splinter, your body will go there and will try and push the splinter out. It's kind of the same thing that happens here. And in America, there were a lot of people now having breast implants removed because of um, this uh, thing where they're always sick, chronically sick with like inflammation and nobody can pinpoint what it is. But with Loma, I think it's more of a physical thing. So because you've now, this could, by the way, could have happened on either side. It's just that unfortunately for her, it was the left. If it was on the right, it wouldn't have been as scary. But what happens is by, by traumatizing the pec muscle, um, you form scar tissue. And the, within the pec muscle, there are a couple of trigger points. And when those trigger points are active, the pain will be localized and it will kind of refer up and then you kind of into your arm at times. The pec minor uh, also uh, attaches here to here. As you can appreciate again, it's gonna be pulling this forward. Mm. So what Loma has, I, I believe, is that, you know, the trigger points have now become quite, uh, very, like, they, yeah. it's like really bad. Okay, so it's taken time to get there. So what we've been doing is literally massaging, not massaging, but trigger point uh, therapy. So we just find the trigger yeah. point and then I push on it. Yeah. yeah. Or we use a little vibrating machine just holding till it uh, lets go a little bit. Okay. Uh, and that is definitely, I believe, definitely going to make a huge difference, you know. Um, and I believe that once she goes back now, I think she will definitely not experience it again. And or if it'll be so much milder, okay. Mm. And well, it, and also less um, scary on an anxious sort of level because yes. it's not my heart, you know. Yes. And even although all the surgeons and uh, cardiologists and whoever said that to me. Because the pain keeps on presenting the exact same sort of mm. in the area, mm. I am always thinking, yeah, it's my heart. yeah, and that, yeah. and that maybe the doctors are wrong, and it must be my heart. Right? Exactly that. Um, 
Yeah, so, and also her, her actual shoulders also, it's almost yeah. like she's developed a kind of frozen shoulder, which is very painful, because you can't actually, you know, abduct and externally rotate easily, because it's stuck over here. And again, that's also because of the chronic pulling forward like this. So all the muscles, uh, the rotator cuff muscles become shorter, especially the subscapularis and the teres muscles. So, and my little bicep. And her bicep, <laughs> it's a little, because it hasn't been able to work. <laughs> yes. So, you know, it's just, think out the box. In other words, maybe sometimes it's actually something so, so obvious or so uh, simple that you can't believe that a trigger point can cause such extreme pain. And it can. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we're doing with Loma. And then also what I tell all my ladies that have um, breast implants, because your shoulders are being pulled forward all the time, you've got to always bear in mind that you've got to try and get your shoulders back, okay? So it's a simple thing. You're just putting a broom or something behind your back and just holding it like this to stretch the pecs and the front of your shoulders, your biceps and everything like that. This is like a prevention. So I think that's I about think it. Do that. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm, but I'm, I'm going to get but there. But you've got to get there. Yeah, yes, I'm you will get, get there. there. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do it. Yeah, we will. It's, it's sadly, it's a bit slow because again, you know, we couldn't treat it earlier because, yeah. you know, she wasn't here. But I, I definitely believe that we will definitely get it a lot better. And once also she knows what to do and where to um, massage, she can get one of those little hand massages, right? And then you can just massage around there yourself and into your shoulders, into your arms, just to, and then slowly, slowly just get more movement going into it again. Because you want to be able to swim again and Absolutely. all that, you yeah. know? And maybe Renata also mm. just say that when I came mm. um, with my headache, um, oh, you yes. thought that everything um, sort of, you know, transferred from wherever, yes. um, and it was all of this shoulder, yes. neck, whatever. Yes. And then um, Renata did put yes. needles into my face all the way around here. Yes. And literally within the hour, um, headache yeah. gone. And I've now been here for a week. I've had two sessions today as my third mm -hmm. and no headache, no headache whatsoever. Yeah, really, so, yeah, that's, yeah. It's, so, it's huge. It again, is. The, the, again, this is here because also all these trigger points kind of refer up into the face and that. So all it's like dominoes. Dominoes, yes. Yeah. So you, one muscle goes, then the next one goes, the next one goes. You basically just have this like vice yeah. grip of muscles that are in a complete spasm so you just got to start unpacking that and uh, then the muscles do resolve the pain does go away okay so it's just to find the right therapist um, um yeah and dry needling is also uh, you know a very effective tool to use if you find somebody that knows exactly what they're doing yes so always yeah just be very careful um and I think that's about it. Thank you. Yes, because thank I mean, you. that's just uh, really quite fascinating because, you know, I, when she told me the story, I thought, okay, I, mm, I've got an idea, but until you actually feel the patient and you push on spots and then she'll say, yo, yes, that's the spot and that's the pain I feel, then you have, I get so excited because now I know I can help her a lot, you know. Thank you, guys. So, and thanks, Steve, for your... <laughs> thanks, Steve. Yeah, can you just keep quiet? You just talk so much. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Steve. Bye, Steve. <laughs> yes. Just Maybe Steve, Steve can just... We hold hands. Yes. 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 <laughs> I know you're being silly now. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you watched the whole video because you'd be far much cleverer. <laughs> Bye.